Joining us in the studio this morning, Ms. Amanda Shires. Good morning. Well, good morning. This is a great day. Thanks for being here. I'm so glad to be here. You're um, kind of touring the West Coast right now in support mm-hmm. of the new record, My Piece of Land. It's a great title. Thanks. Thanks. Did it come from Scarlett O'Hara? No, it came from the song, the last song on the record called You Are My Home. It's a line from there. Mm-hmm. And it's um, sort of... Uh, I think it sort of represents the collection as a whole of trying to figure out what home is and where it is and what makes one. What makes, I, I'm a cancer, so that's very important to me. It's, right. Yeah, I'm a homebody. Yeah. Yeah. You're a Texas girl. I am. I live in, I live in Nashville, though, now. I was, right. Yeah, but I was born in Texas. And, and you, were you a prodigy as a young child on the fiddle? No, um, I <laughs> wasn't at all, but um, uh, my things worked, and... Um, I was really good at, at you know, ta- like if some if one of the guys in the Playboys would ask me, um, can you play the third part, which is the most boring part? Mm-hmm. I'd always be like, yeah, I'd love to play that, you know, or, you know, whatever they said, can you be, play quieter? You know, just a person that was able to take direction without feeling And you were all of what, 15, 15 years old at that point, 16 years old when yeah. you joined the Texas Playboys? Yeah. Yeah. Um, were you a fan of swing music at that point? Were you? Yes, yeah. that was. Um, yeah, I learned to pl- play swing because I was at a violin lesson, and um, I was only good at the parts of, of um, classical music that I liked. The rest I wouldn't practice, so it sounded like t- terrible. But my teacher said, "I'm going to show you this fiddle tune after after the lesson. If you can just stay engaged the whole lesson." And I was like, "Sure, I'd love to hear what that sounds like." At curiosity, and then after the lesson, he played Spanish two step, the Bob Wills like. Uh, instrumental song Mm -hmm. and from there I was just nope I want to study this I want to do this and um, my mom let me do fiddle as long as I would do violin Um, we were talking before we went on mic we have a mutual friend Carrie Rodriguez yeah she's now she's a prodigy now she studied um, classical violin and got a scholarship to Oberlin College Uh and was studying classical music at Oberlin when Lyle Lovett came through town and said bring your fiddle down to the sound check and then she quit Oberlin and went to Berkeley to study fiddle. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Very cool. So, I mean, I, I'm i wondering, you know, from your experience and from Carrie's experience, can you do both? Can you play fiddle and violin? Yep. I think um, what it does when you can do both is it sort of, um, uh, you can, you get a lot of technique and um, good practice habits from classical music and I also do like classical music but um then with the fiddle stuff you know you learn improvisation and I think a combination of the two really leads to something um uh more expressive like you have more more tools to express yourself musically I guess well I've learned something today thank you for that and I mean (laughs) I think you could play rock and roll fiddle better if you can do both yeah yeah uh you live in Nashville now of course yeah you're married to someone we all know. Yeah, well, I don't know if everybody knows. Well, most of our <laughs> listeners know <laughs> yeah, Jason right, Isbell. Yeah. And um, I was telling you once again before we went on mic that the last time that I saw you was in Nashville, not last September, but September of 2015. Right. At the Ryman Auditorium, mm-hmm. and it was the Americana Awards, and you and Jason were literally sitting two rows in front of me, and you were wearing this most amazing gown. It w- and Spanx. That and was the trick. Well, <laughs> you didn't. The Spanx is what ruled that out. Well, because you had just had a baby like two weeks before. Yeah, yeah, exactly to the day, two weeks. Yeah. yeah. It was the first time I went out of the house and, you know, let her not be with me. Was it hard? Oh, yeah. But it's got nothing on not seeing her for three weeks, right. which is what I'm doing now. Yeah. I mean, she's home in Nashville with Jason. And yeah. And you're on the road. Mm-hmm. Do you talk to her every night? No. Um, I talk to Jason all the time, and um, I talk to her every other day or so it kind of makes her upset to see facetime and stuff because oh, she yeah. doesn't understand that why well, you're not there yeah, yeah but she sees me you know yeah um this is your first solo album in a while yeah because you were busy i was so busy yeah um did you did you find it easy to kind of nest and write and do all that at the same time i found it um going through it i, I nested because like i don't know if that's hormone induced or what but um, I was doing a lot of that, you know, cleaning the drawers and putting together baby stuff. And I did all that stuff. I did everything you could do. Mm-hmm. Vacuumed my car, vacuumed his car, 
picked my weeds and the neighbor's weeds. <laughs> made a garage gallery in the garage painting because, you know, you, your baby's going to see that yeah. garage when she comes in and she's going to be like, y'all are terrible parents. You didn't even <laughs> get the garage ready for me. But um, after I did all that, I, stored, I had to face the real situation, which was bringing a child into the world and this world and um, what that meant and and what I how could I possibly be a good mom you know I'm, I'm never home and um, I travel all the time and what what does that mean what things will she inherit in her childhood that mean I don't know home home yeah and so then I started writing the record and working through it and um, discovered that it's all just fine so far so good so far so good do you guys want to do a tune for us sure Introduce your friend here, your, your bandmate. This, <laughs> this is my bandmate and friend with the coolest hair, enviable hair. Um, originally from Miami, Florida, and currently residing in Nashville, Tennessee, my friend and your friend too, Zach Setchfield. Hiya, Zach. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. You do have a head of hair. Um, yeah, I try. Of which I don't, so I'm <laughs> follically challenged yeah. and jealous. But Follically challenged. Yes. We all have our gifts. <laughs> so live in the studio, Amanda Shires here on KRCB. Doing this one for you. A faced golden light rain down from the street light. It fell across your shoulder. Pause just above your collar Like it had something to show me As if I wasn't already noticing Your eyes a shade of wonder Like if thunder had a color It could have been harmless Wanting to see If I could get a little closer And walk away breathing It might have been cheating Where exactly is the line? Too early to admit I wanted you for mine I kissed Maria in the alley You laughed and spilled your whiskey There's some I can't remember A talented bartender And way out in the cheap sea the stars stared unblinking The ones that know anything Won't be revealing It could have been harmless Wanting to see If I could get a little closer and walk away breathing It might have been cheating Where exactly is the lie? Too early to admit it I wanted you for mine There was a sword Too early to admit it 
I wanted you for mine It could have been Amanda Shire is live in the studio. Harmless from the new album, My Piece of Land. That was beautiful. Thank you. I mean, chill-inducing beautiful. Yes, that's the goal. Good job. Thank you. Amanda's on tour in support of the album. She is on the West Coast. She's playing San Francisco tomorrow night. And then um, on down to L.A., I'm assuming you're going south? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then when do you get to go home? Um, November 21st. I really? Believe. You're out... Yeah, I've been out since November 3rd. Well, we had a week off at home. Just about a week. Yeah, been just, you know, touring, support of the record, trying to, you know, get together a college fund. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. So um, when Jason goes back on tour, are you will you tour with him and bring the, bring a man, or no. bring the child? No. Mercy? Um, yeah, no. Mercy will go with Jason because he has... Uh, you know, he's been doing pretty well the past couple of years, and um, he has a tour bus. Yeah. And so they, they'll they travel in the night, like at normal bedtime hours, and um, she'll wake up and be able to be wild and free in some new place. And um, Does Grandma go with them? No. Nope. No? Nope. Mm -mm. my, mom, my mom's not retired for retiring for two more years, I mm -hmm. don't think. And then, um, yeah. Uh, but I tour in a van. Yeah. And um, it's hard enough as an adult to ride 10 hours a day. So yeah. I feel like I would just be, I don't know. At some point, though, um, will it be that someone's going to have to stay home while Mercy's in school? or you know, homeschool or home um, school? We just sort of live in the present. Yeah. And, um, well, she's still young. Yeah, she's, yeah. But I feel like, who knows, you know? I mean, I don't know how to homeschool, but... I've been to school, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the fact that you're out on tour now. She just turned two, right? Uh, one. Oh, just turned yeah, one. Just oh, turned one. oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, she's a year yeah, yeah, two yeah. months old. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, my math is off. She's super cute. Yeah, they're always cute at that age. Yeah. That's so you don't flush them down the toilet at four thirty <laughs> in the morning when you can't get them to stop crying. Yeah. That's nature's way. Yeah. Um, how long did it take to write the record, and then when you? Did you hook up with Dave Cobb through Jason, or did he approach you about the project? Oh, or? no. Um, well, I became friends with Dave Cobb through Jason, yeah, when we were making that Southeastern mm -hmm. record and um, and worked with him and Jason and then just him, you know, on and off for different things, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that time where I was telling you about how I was writing songs to work through stuff, I got four or five songs in, and um, I said, I'm going to call Dave Cobb. I know him. I feel like we understand each other and, you know, it sort of saves time and the fact that you don't have to learn each other's, um, I don't know. Weird like, work habits. Yeah, yeah. And also like just getting used to each other so that you're not self-conscious and stuff. So you can really like try and to communicate something as vague and abstract as music can be kind of challenging, you know, you wind up comparing music to food mm -hmm. sometimes like ah it sounds too much like peanut butter and jelly i need it to sound more like a steak and he's like i know what that means yeah but is that uh, what makes him a great producer um no what makes him a great producer is his instincts are dead on and um and he um doesn't like for you to bring demos in he you just he likes it if you write the song and you sort of have have it on your phone like a version of it so you walk in there and you play your song and then everybody in the room including dave sits down in the room and you all record it together so it in that way it takes away from the self-consciousness of actually recording because you're in there playing a song all together and it really captures like making music and you know and it's not always perfect and he doesn't mind flaws and i think mm -hmm. a combination of his um caring and then also his instincts it's what make him a great producer and he knows when to order lunch yeah um, one thing i love about his work is he works with so many different type of people mm -hmm. but when you listen to your album or jason's album or bonnie bishop's album mm -hmm. 
it's the artist that you hear. You don't hear his production. Right. You like somebody like Jeff Lynn, you know, mm-hmm. whenever you hear a record by Tom Petty or yeah. you, you can tell that it's Jeff Lynn that's produced it. Right. But exactly. with Dave it's not like that. Yeah, I think he's he's a master at serving the song and also um t- keeping the artist intact somehow, you know. Not trying to mold you to sing a certain way or do anything like that. Just really encourage you just to be yourself and yeah. yeah. It's a great record. It sounds so good. Well, thank you. In fact, thank let's you. listen to a track. Okay. We're going to listen to the big hit single. The, whoa. When You're Gone, Amanda Shires from the album My Piece of Land here on KRCB. That's When You're Gone from the new album My Piece of Land by Amanda Shires. Amanda joining us in the studio all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. Woo! It's a lovely town. It was my first visit that year when I came out there, and I'd never been in Nashville before. Well, I hope everybody was nice to you. Everybody, you know, I, I was amazed on how friendly people mm-hmm. are there. And mm-hmm. He's the only person in Nashville that's grumpy. That's why I take <laughs> him out on the road with me. I'm like, don't let this guy represent our town. Get him out of town. <laughs> no, I mean, everybody, you know, you'd go into the yeah. convenience store, and everybody yeah. was just as sweet as can be. Yeah. And I'll tell you. I fell in love with hot chicken. Oh, good, yeah. good. I love a hot chicken. Can't find it I mean, it I love, I used to. I love when other people eat it now. Oh, you can't eat it anywhere? There's a long story. Long. I, sh- I should probably write write a little blog about it, about yeah. my experiences overseas where I ate some meat and then I had a terrible, humiliating experience on stage. Oh, but that's show business. It was a real show. Yeah. It was for everybody. <laughs> I don't think we need to go into much more detail, but it's keeping you from eating hot chicken now it, for the rest of your life? Well, tell, you know, until I get brave enough to do that again, <laughs> maybe if I'm not going to be playing anytime soon. Until the memory fades. Yeah. <laughs> One time I also split my pants on stage because I was touring in Ireland and I was eating bread, soda bread everywhere I went just because it's like all homemade. Yeah. Well, that happens. It did. I had yeah. to like sidestep off the stage. Yeah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. <laughs> Walk off like a then crab. Then I had to come back on with my jacket on because the, the show encore. wasn't over. Oh. <laughs> Amanda, uh, on tour, the record's really good, My Piece of Land. It's taken a few years to put it together. It's your fourth solo album, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. So, um, and you started, what, in the early 2000s with your first solo record? 2009, so. I think. Oh, that's not that early then. No. no. I mean, I, I was playing fiddle and being a side person. And lots with of Rod and... Being. Rod and Todd Snyder and anybody. Yeah. Every time I've seen Todd, he's been solo. I never got to see you play with him. Oh. I know. That's crazy because we did come up the West Coast a few times. I saw him with the hardworking Americans. Okay, yeah. But, um, but you, you've done a lot of side work. How um, do you find it more freeing to be the front person as opposed to being a side person? Or is it, I imagine it's a much easier job to be the side person yeah. because all the attention's not on you. Well, you know, the um, that part of it, the attention part, or plus or minus attention, that's not the thing that's harder. Um, or as a side person, it's a, there's a lot less to think about. Yeah. You know, you don't have the, um, you don't have to tell somebody else when they're doing a bad job. You know, or you don't have to think about what you know all the hotel rooms that you need to purchase. I don't know. Just to me, there's a lot of freedom in being a side person because you can just play your instrument and and go. Yeah. Yeah. And then the lead person takes responsibility for anybody else's action. So that's harder in some ways, but it is nice to, you know, play whatever song I want to play every night. Yeah. I like all of it though. I just, anytime I get to play music, I feel lucky that I do it. I'm a shitty waitress. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, you know, that's good. It's it's nice to hear that. Um, and, it's, you know, because you've been at it for a while, and it's nice to know that you've been at it for a while. You've worked within the system of Nashville, although the outside system of Nashville, mm-hmm. if you will. And you're not jaded. You still love doing it. I do love doing it. I did start to get burnt out, though, in 2011 um, when I made my last direct – no, during – no, it was downfall of 2011, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, right about then, I started feeling like I was doing too much, and then, wouldn't you know, I started swinging off a rope swing, and I broke my finger. Ooh. And then they said I wasn't going to play anymore. And then I, you know, something is, it, w- when you're threatened somehow, you sort of get a new appreciation for it. Is that about the time that you and Jason met? Yep. Yeah. Well, no, we met 12 or 13 years ago, but that's when we started, you know, hanging out together more. Yeah. Being more than... 
we weren't Fel- more than anything at first. You we were, were fellow uh, musicians. W- well, we were, yeah, we were friends. And then when I broke my finger, I was handicapped. So I needed, I needed, I had a five-speed car, and I needed help getting back and forth from Sewanee, where I was going to school in Nashville. And he was like, I'll take you to your doctor's appointments. And I was like, okay. Ah, mm-hmm. sweet. Mm-hmm. Are you still studying? I'm writing my thesis, and I'll be done in April. Can I ask what... Um, you're writing your thesis about? It's um, poems and, yep, it's poems. Are you studying literature? Is that? I, yeah, I've, you know, I'm studying creative writing, but poetry. Oh, cool. Yeah. How much different is it to write poems and lyrics? It's way different. Um, the, um, there are a lot of poetics in songwriting, and um, poems tend to be more structured and, um, or can be more structured songwriting you have you have something you get to work with besides just the words you know the musical setting does a lot for um the emotional landscape and you know conveying things and on the page of of just poems and poetry you all you have to operate um, in are the words you know you just have in if if they're vague and you have no, I don't know, it's just it's a lot more a lot more to pay attention to with poems. Well, you, like. you say that poems are in structure, but songs are in a structure, too, especially if you're doing, like, the oh, classical yeah. two verses, a chorus, yeah. verse, chorus. I think I meant, like, you know, some people's ideas of poems are, like, where they're just journals, really, where mm-hmm. they're just saying, I feel so sad, or whatever <laughs> they're talking about. But yeah. I don't know, there's... there's um. I like fish. Different be- beasts. Yeah. yeah. You know, you get the, when you have a chorus in a song, you get to, um, you can change anything with a chorus. You do chorus, you can change the, the meaning of your verses with a chorus. Mm-hmm. You, and then you have a bridge, you mm-hmm. know? I don't know. Yeah. Poems are a little bit different. You don't have as much, as many colors to paint with. You well, got, your, you got yeah. your black and white and then on the. It's a blank page. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas when you sit down to write a song, you it's more like a watercolor. Yeah. Oh, that's I've never heard it put that way before. But do you start off by with making uh, with words, or do you start off with a lick on the guitar, or? Um, it comes both ways, you know. Uh, the best ones I've found come together, where you can do the chords and the writing together, because you could sort of hear the the sounds of what you're supposed to be doing from wherever the hell these songs come from. Yeah. And, um, yeah. But, you know, sometimes you can write the words first. Yeah. Uh, we were talking with Amanda Shires. Uh, she's in the studio this morning on her West Coast swing to support the album My Piece of Land, and it's a good one, and it's available everywhere. So you can get it online, or you can go to your local record store and pick it up. That's true. Yeah. Do you want to guys want to do another tune for us? Oh, yeah. You got your fiddle? Here it goes. I wanted to mention um, the guitar that you played in the last song, the tenor guitar. It's a beautiful old Gibson. Oh, thank you. And you said it was from 1956? Yeah. Wow. Mm. It sounds better than ever. Um, I got that from the woman at Carter Carter Vintage Guitars mm-hmm. in Nashville. There's Walt and Christy who own it. And um, she knows I love tenors, so when she sees some come in, she just stores them away. That's nice. And then the fiddle, how long you had that fiddle? This one I had to see. Same year, 2011. Yeah. My other fiddle died. and um, Was it part of one. the t- tire swing accident? It was a separate <laughs> incident. It was like, t- I should have known, trouble comes in threes. <laughs> it was like two weeks earlier, and it g- died in an onstage uh, tripping accident. Uh-huh. And this one, though, is new. A guy named Jeffrey Allison made it. Um, he actually lives on the West Coast now, but he joined the Army to try and learn how to make fiddles and then wound up in... Um, the Middle East making mm-hmm. fiddles and transporting them in his, you know, in their tanks and hummers by night. I didn't know that that was an option when you joined the army that you got to learn how to make fiddles. Well, you know, he was expecting that he'd be stationed in Germany or yeah. something and then, you know, study that yeah. in his off time. But well, it's, I'd love to hear how it sounds. It's, it's my favorite thing. What are you going to play for us? Pale Fire. Okay. Amanda Shire is live in the studio. One, two, one, two. She took 
sugar lover on a road trip Turned out to be a bad idea She lost his eagle feather roach clip Present from some sad Maria And things never made it back to normal He was the wrong kind of naive She stopped for gas in Oklahoma Left him alone on St. John's Eve And there's a pale fire There's a pale fire There's a pale fire rising on the plain Remember when I was a queen Now I'm just another rider I can't keep up with your machine And every man I meet is perfect Any better they'd be wrong Though it's ever really worth it and I can spend my days alone There's a pale fire There's a pale fire There's a pale fire rising on the plain Any better they'd be wrong Though it's never really worth it And I could spend my days alone There's a pale fire There's a pale fire There's a pale fire rising on the plain Very nice. Thank you. Very nice indeed. Amanda Shires from the album My Piece of Land. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us. It's, it's been wonderful. It's nice to meet you. It's great to meet you too. And um, your daughter and my stepdaughter have the same middle name. Rose? Yep. That is a good one. Yep. That's a good one. It is a good one. Mm -hmm. um, continued success. I hope the record does really, really well. Well, thank you. We love it here at the station. We play it a lot. Thank you for playing it. It means a lot. And uh, have a good rest of the trip and get home safely for Thanksgiving. That's, the, that's I'm hoping, you know. Yeah. And then um, we'll see you the next time you're out here. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Amanda Shire is live in the studio. Pick up the record, My Piece of Land. It's out now. It's really good. This is KRCB FM. Radio 91.